Can you tell us about what exactly made you want to get into developing in the first place? Uh, it's, it's, it was always my life dream. Since I was very young, I wanted to make video games. In the course of this show, I've mocked David Jaffe and Tim Buckley. I've outed Ted Danson for being bald, and I've derided the opinions of Colin Moriarty. I've poked enough fun at Don Matrick that he could make a game with his new company where Facebook users had to plant water and grow my insults every day. I don't know any of these people, but despite anything I might have said, I try really hard to remember that they are people. They are flawed and passionate individuals trying to do the same things as the rest of us. We all start in diapers and we'll all end up dead someday, and we're all trying to do things in the meantime to distract ourselves from the fact that we'll all end up dead someday. Morbid, maybe, but I choose to look at it differently. This need to create, to love, to express love and passion, and that time in between is beautiful and human, and honestly, that's what gets me out of bed every day. I'm passionate and driven, so every week I come on here and rant about video games, draw silly pictures of myself, and make ridiculous photoshops of people riding dinosaurs. Phil Fish is passionate and driven, too, only his work, Fez, is more brilliant and beautiful than any artful expression I've left on the world yet. There was a time in my life that I, perhaps maybe like Phil, entirely defined my life by these sorts of things and weighted the opinion of others to define myself, my actions, and my art. Then I had children. Children are great for adjusting perspective. My kids told me I was fat and bald before I ever had the stones to admit it to myself. They also remind me of a time when my passions lived in a bubble, completely separate from the opinions of others. The first comic books and stories that I wrote, I wrote because I enjoyed making them. I answered to no one in my creative life. Every time I took my action figures and reenacted Star Wars, I wasn't worried about what anyone thought. I just did it. Although my parents were upset the fifth time they found my Han Solo figure dumped in a glass of water and placed in the freezer. I couldn't afford carbonite on my allowance. Phil Fish is sadly taking a break from video games. Now, I fully expect him to be back at some point, if not with Fez 2, with some other project. But I hope at least while he's away, he rediscovers that joy of creation, the kind I was talking about I had when I was a kid. I hope he can find a way to just be proud of Fez. There's a lot to be proud of. That first moment when that world spun and I got the mechanic behind the game, that first moment when the world began to storm, I got chills. He's a flawed dude for sure. Phil and Beer both said things they probably sh do and should regret. E even if you're quoting Futurama, you should never insinuate that someone should kill themselves. Also, I'm annoyed with the notion of pejoratively referring to Fish and John Blow as hipsters. But I am married to someone who doesn't think twice about saying the same thing about me and when my writing friends come over and we drink wine and talk about the world as if it's something we inherently understand and can fix. And she's also sort of right, too, between killing noobs on Call of Duty, call me a hipster for not playing with her, and preferring games like Fez and Braid. Now, that keeps me grounded, but she's earned the right to call me out on my shit. She's my wife. I guess what I'm trying to say is, Phil, I get it. Take what time you need. If you do Harper Lee this shit and never release another game, then thank you for Fez. It meant a lot to me. Now go get you some childhood and throw some Han Solos in the freezer. No, 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 no.